Hello, welcome back to my channel, my very long dormant YouTube channel. My name is Ivy. Um, <laughs> let's get into what I'm doing here, why I'm back here, all of that good stuff. And then we're gonna do a little get ready with me. So I uh, was doing um, a fair amount of work into making YouTube videos when I started my channel back at the beginning of 2022. I was using a DSLR camera, editing through professional software. I was using a separate microphone to record my audio and then syncing up that audio. Uh, just doing, in general, a lot of work to get a video together for you guys. And that's because it was fun and I did have a little bit more time to be able to do that. But in truth, as my life became more complicated and things became more present in other parts of my life that needed my attention, YouTube obviously fell completely by the wayside. We moved, we've undergone many, many changes, we're undergoing lots of changes constantly. And the truth is that I am just not set up with my current schedule to do that amount of work to put out a video. It's just not realistic. Um, but what's sad is that I do still really like sharing longer form content and I do really like sharing on YouTube. So my new goal for the new year, even though I am not a resolutions person at all, is to leave perfection behind and embrace imperfection in an effort to just be able to share and get content out for you guys. I love talking about makeup. I love talking about it with you guys. Um, and I don't want to get in my own way. So now we are using my phone, which is amazing that I can even get this level of quality on my phone. We're using my ring light. We're using a very bare bones setup and I am going to worry less about the fact that it's not gonna be the most artistic or beautiful video and more just wanna share with you guys. And I'm hoping that you'll be here for that and we'll see how it goes. Maybe one day if I have more time, I'll be able to get back into fancier setups. Um, but for now, this is what I can do. So this is what I'm gonna do. Uh, and with that, let's get into a get ready with me. All right, so I have just done one of my eyebrows. Uh, if you don't know, but hopefully you do if you follow me on Instagram, I have, these are my brows. See, this is what it looks like. Uh, this is from overplucking them as a foolish teenager during the 90s. And um, basically I ruined my eyebrows permanently. Now I know people will say, oh, there's so many things you can do to get them to grow back. I have tried them. I have tried them all. None of them have worked. They don't work for me. So my hair, my eyebrow hairs never grew back, which means that I fill them in. I don't have any interest in getting them microbladed or whatever people do. I'm fine with filling them in every day. Um, I've kind of developed what I feel like is my style. And that is what you see over here. So this is a filled in eyebrow. And pretty much the key product that I use is the Glossier Brow Flick Pen. I've been using this since it came out and Katie Jane Hughes recommended and showed how to use it properly. And ever since then, it has been a staple of my routine. I do like to try other brow pens here and there just to see if something better has come on the market. But honestly, so far for me at least, and what I need to accomplish, meaning going from this to this, the Glossier Brow Flick is perfection. And then usually I'll set with some kind of gel or gel powder. Um, right now I'm using this one from Gen C Beauty. This is their brow powder um, in, I think I have medium brown. And um, I uh, am very lucky I get sent a lot of PR from this brand and I love this brand so I happily <laughs> accept it. Um, I think they're wonderful, make great products. This is like the darkest, this is medium brown. This is like the darkest um, eyebrow gel powder thing I've ever used. Um, it really, a little goes a long way. So I definitely use a light hand when I when I set my brows with this. But again, for me, because I have do, do have naturally like dark brows, um, it works really, really well. So that's kind of what I've been using. Uh, so this is one eyebrow done and I'm gonna work on my other eyebrow now and then we're gonna get into some base products. I'm just zooming you in so you can see the Gen C powder going on. So again, I am using very light pressure to apply it. And it is this sort of powdery texture that goes on. 
and it is just kind of filling in and setting the hairs and the fake hairs that I, <laughs> that I drew on. Um, and then usually after I have done a light layer of this, I'll just use a clean spoolie to run through my brows and clean them up and uh, just kind of mesh all the products together. So this is like a clean spoolie, just going in and meshing everything together. And I know that my personal brow style is heavy. Um, this is certainly not for everybody, but I firmly believe that both of these products could work for you, even if you do a much lighter brow or um, a less intense brow shape. The brow flick is really great at um, creating fake hairs where there are none and filling in gaps. Like let's say you've gotten a little older and there are um, gaps within your brows that never used to be there. You wanna fill in your tail a little more. The brow flick pen is so good for that. Um, and then this brow powder from Gen C, Again, a little goes a long way. You could probably just use this if you don't need to do a lot of filling in. So that's my little brow spiel. Um, I don't, I won't talk a lot about brows probably moving forward because this is really what I do every single day. <laughs> but if I run into any new amazing products, I'll be sure to share them. So because I um, use very specific brow products that don't respond well to when there's any kind of moisture on my face, I always do my brows first. They're like the first thing that I do before I do any um, basic skincare on my face. Um, unless I'm doing, I'll usually do a layer of something like when I first wake up. But then by the time I've sat down to do my makeup, that's all dried down and is, is far gone. So I can do my brows and then I'll go in with some kind of primer, moisturizer. Um, this is something that I've talked about a lot. This is the uh, Verdant Force Field Moisturizer from Phytosurgeons. Not gonna get into details, just suffice it to say, it's pretty much been in every video that I've ever made. It's always on my face. This is like the first thing that I put on. So I'll usually do a pump of this. Looks like this, it's green, it smells amazing. And I'll rub this all over my face and then I might go in with an illuminating primer or, um, you know, I've been using the acne fighting primer sometimes from e.l.f. or a vitamin C primer from e.l.f. or, you know, just something else to kind of add on to this. Um, some days I just use this and then I'll go straight in with makeup. It really depends on what I'm planning to put on on top of it. So I think today I'm, I'm gonna do like a medium coverage base day. So I'm probably gonna do another layer of primer. And I think, yes, I do. I still have this little sample size um, illuminating primer from Say Beauty. This is the Glowy Super Gel in Star Glow. So I've been hanging on to this little sample for quite a while now. It's been working great. This is kind of what the product looks like. And um, I just rub this in and then I focus mostly on my, you know, the tops of my cheekbones. I mean, I'll rub it in everywhere because um, it's a very kind of subtle illumination, but I definitely focus it first on the tops of my cheekbones so that that's where I get the most. I am very interested <laughs> in trying the Auric um, Glowy Primer, what, whatever it is, the Glow Lust, I think it's called the Glow Lust. Hope as Tom has been raving about it and so many people have been raving about it and I've never tried it and I definitely, I'm curious about it. So I feel like that might be down the road my next kind of investment into trying something from Auric, but I'm not pulling the trigger just yet. For now, I'll use what I have. Uh, so I've just done that and I think next I'm gonna do, why don't we do this today? I kind of switch it up every day. I'm gonna use the Ordinary um, Serum Foundation. I've used this a bunch more recently. I'm trying to be better about rotating my products and using them, um, you know, more frequently. This is a very like kind of liquidy uh, serum foundation. This, I have the shade 1.2Y, so it has yellowish undertones. Um, and then sometimes I like to apply this with a brush. Sometimes I like to use my fingers, depends on the day. I've even used it with a sponge, which works pretty well. It's a very, um, lightweight foundation, but it definitely has more coverage than like a skin tint does. Um, and especially over a nicely primed and moisturized face, it works 
amazing. So I, I do feel like this is a really great everyday uh, foundation product because it doesn't, it doesn't feel heavy. Um, it, it sets down nicely once it kind of you know, dries down on your face and it is buildable coverage. Uh, and The Ordinary is very affordable. So <laughs> if you are looking for something to try and you don't have uh, a big budget to spend on that kind of stuff, I would definitely recommend checking them out. I think they're available at this point in so many places like on Ulta, on Sephora, um, other, other beauty sites as well. So I, I would recommend checking them out. And um, at some point I'd like to try, they have like another formula of their foundation as well. That's not the serum one. I'm kind of curious about that, but I don't need to introduce another foundation. I'm trying to use up the ones that I have right now before I would get anything else. That's gonna be, you'll see probably a big theme this year for me is using up more of my products before I allow myself to introduce anything new into my collection. I have been very inspired by the people that I follow, especially on YouTube, that do that. And I think that it promotes a much healthier perspective on things and money and ownership uh, and uh, responsibilities and being an adult in a healthy way. I have a history of getting a little crazy with, you know, getting excited about something and then kind of spending too much on it. That's just the reality of what has happened to me in the past. So I'm trying to be really circumspect about what I buy and about how I purchase. And I'm really excited because I follow so many people that have that same ethos and it encourages me to stick with it and kind of keep going. So that is one very thin layer of the serum foundation, again, by The Ordinary. Let's pick out a concealer to go. Uh, okay, so this is the Kosas Concealer, the Kosas Revealer Concealer. I have the shade 3.2. I'm actually about to finish this up, which is very exciting. And because of that, I do have a new concealer to try on the way from Coolfi Beauty. Um, that is a brand that I've been really interested in trying. They have a very limited range of products right now, and I've heard such good things about the concealer. So since I'm about to finish this one up, I thought I would dip my toes into a new one. Do I like this concealer? Yes, I like this concealer a lot. I feel like this is a great everyday concealer. It makes my under eye area feel moisturized and taken care of. It has good coverage. Um, I, For me, the color that I have works really well. Uh, so I feel good about it. I know that some other people have tried it and have had trouble finding like their perfect shade. So I think their range is actually pretty decent um, for shade options, but I know a lot of them do lean a little bit yellow. So I guess, you know, if you're depending on your skin tone, it, it might be, it might not work for you. I don't, I don't know, but take a look. Cause I do think as far as like just an everyday concealer that makes your skin feel good, it's a good one for me. And I have mixed feelings about Kosas. They've kind of taken the brand in a very interesting, or I should say less interesting direction for me. Like I was so excited about this brand when it launched and I met the founder uh, back when it first started and it was just like a collection of lipsticks. And we had a really awesome conversation about her inspiration and like how she started the brand. I feel they've moved into just, I don't know, a lot of the packaging of the products and a lot of the products that they've come out with recently have been kind of like not super excited about, but I really like their base products. Um, and I actually also really like their, their face powder, although I've been getting more into loose setting powder over um, baked powders, but I still like their baked powder. Uh, and the reason for that is because uh, somebody that I follow on Instagram was like, hey, here's why loose powder is better um, at setting your baked makeup than any baked powder ever. She explained it better than I can. So anyway, I'll just leave it at that and say that I'm using more loose powders. So uh, Okay, so that is the Revealer Concealer. Again, you can see very lightweight coverage. I have nice glowiness under my eyes. Um, I like that. But I don't want too much glow. 
So we're gonna go in now with my new favorite thing that I got as a gift, which is the Pat McGrath Under Eye Setting Powder. This is the Skin Fetish, Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder. And I need to find my brush, which is over here. Um, so this powder came as part of a gift set that I got around the holidays. And I've never owned anything other than the eyeshadows from Pat McGrath. And so this was a whole set of different things from her that, again, I was just, they were new to me. And this, this powder has been one of my favorite things, <laughs> has been one of my favorite things. I've been using it pretty much every day since, since I got it. Um, I don't know if it's just the fact that I'm not used to setting my eyes with their own powder. And so it's sort of just like new to me and fun, but it feels really good and it looks really good. And I have found that since I started using it, my makeup has really um looked better under my eyes like constantly so i think that's like a good sign i'm a, i'm enjoying that um one thing about me is I really prefer to do my base before I do my eyes, even though I often have to clean up glitter fallout because I do like to do a lot of glittery looks. Um, I'm trying to get into this idea of doing my eyes and then my base, but I just, it doesn't feel natural to me. So I prefer to do my base and then my eyes. Um, but what I am gonna do is I'm going to just set my eyes and then do my full powder stuff like later after I've done my eye makeup. Um, I'm just gonna leave it where I'm gonna leave my face where it is now <laughs> and then come back and do the rest of my face after I've done my eyes. Um, and I think for today, I wanna to play with Mothership 5. So this is one of the Pat McGrath Motherships. Um, I have several of them. This is probably my favorite. It's also one of the older ones. Um, it's just the perfect color story for me. I mean, it is, it never ceases to catch my eye. It never ceases to, um, it, it just always get, it always gets me excited. It always gets me excited to do my makeup. I know how it performs. I know what it does. There's still shades in here that I've probably never even touched because I'm always attracted to the same ones, but like, I love it. I love this red, so beautiful. I don't know what I'm gonna do today, but I am excited to play with it. And um, let's see what, let's see what I come up with. So we have a little bit of a smoky kind of eye going on at the moment. Um, I think I'm definitely going to be adding some sparkle. I mean, come on, it's Pat McGrath. What would what, what would what would an eye look be without some sparkle? I'm just trying to make sure that all of my beautiful, rich matte colors are blended before I start adding in any sparkle to the look. Um, I like to take a fluffy brush like this. This is just one from um, Thrive Cosmetics. It came with my, or I got it with my um, mascara that I'm trying out from them. And um, just leave it clean so that I can use it as a total just blending brush. I mean, it's not a secret. I think most people know that you can do that, but if you didn't, um, it's just nice to have a clean fluffy brush around for blending whenever you're doing an eye look like this. So, I literally just take that and kind of go over where I've been putting down color and just smoke it out until I'm happy with it. You'll notice that I don't really use eye primer. Sometimes I'll take a little bit of my concealer and tap it onto my eye. I know that eye primer can really help if you're doing a very intense um, glitter look. I just don't tend to do it for myself personally. It's definitely a personal preference thing. Um, but I'm sure that if I were to do a look where I really wanted a very um, pigmented color to like be at its fullest, that's a situation in which I would maybe consider using a primer, but in most cases, nine out of 10, I will, I will not be the one to do that.
I just did my eye look kind of um, how I felt like doing it today. I have that kind of green sparkle duochrome in my inner corner. I have those smoky browns on the outer corner. I reached for a little bit of that red underneath my eyes and then I used that, I think it's one of her like, what is it, VR sex to see shades or whatever. This one uh, that you can't even pick up on camera. I used that for my most inner corner on the bottom. I don't know, it's kind of a random look, but I had fun doing it. And then I added the uh, liquid liner using the um, eyeliner pen from Pat McGrath, another thing that came in that gift set that I received that I thought I would just try out and use because I don't really have a, um, I'm missing my M Cosmetics liquid liners right now. They're almost all dried up. I haven't repurchased them yet and those are kind of my go-to ones, so anyway. Moving on, I'm going to do a little bit of bronzer. Uh, I have been doing a lot of powder bronzer recently from the Hourglass uh, kit that I have, which is right here, looks like this. So there's a bronzer in here that I use a lot of, but I think today I'm gonna go back to this, this one by Makeup by Mario. This is the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer in Light Medium. This is a great kind of cream compact bronzer and it gives you a really natural bronze look without, I mean, it's it's kind of, it's really, 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 really hard to overdo this. So I really like to use it um, because I don't need to worry about looking like I messed up my makeup and it just blends in super effortlessly. I use different brushes for it depending on the look that I want, if I want a more diffused Look, I might use a big fluffy brush like this. This one happens to be tapered and it's like an old one from Becca, actually meant for highlighting, I think. Um, and if I want it to be more concentrated, I could use like a denser, thicker brush, more of a domed uh, shape and really just like chisel my face. But I don't really like to use this for contouring. I just like to use it to give myself a little bit more of a bronzed, illuminated glow. So I like to feature it in the traditional spots, kind of on the you know, like the hollows and high points of my face, um, right under my hairline over here a little bit, and sometimes just a little smack roll along my chin. So it's definitely got a glow to it, which is really nice. Um, I usually like to get my skin nice and glowy, and um, this is definitely a good product for that. And then I'll, you know, tamp down with powder when I need to, so. Okay, so now comes the hard part, which is figuring out what I'm gonna use for blush. And I have so many blushes that I love so very much that I don't know, I don't know what I want to reach for. Let me go look over here and see if I can pick one. Okay, so I think I'm gonna use Inferno by Phytosurgeons. This is one of their Skin Spark blush bombs. I know you guys are probably sick of seeing me use these, um, but I do love them. This is a loved pot. Here, uh, these are super creamy and pigmented and beautiful. Um, you can apply a good amount and still have it blend out to sheer heaven. This formula, I mean, look at this. So this is where I started, right? Like this is looks like a lot of blush and this is where it ends up. It is just, so beautiful and this color in particular i mean all their colors are super nuanced and just gorgeous it's it's you can't go wrong um i rave about their blushes all the time highly 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 recommend them but yeah inferno is probably one of my most used shades by them i think it's just very flattering with a lot of the kind of warm tone looks that i like to do um but they have gorgeous tones and shades for every skin tone um, every undertone, so, 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 so good. 
So anyway, that this was, yeah, I mean, that took two seconds, two seconds flat. And I feel like it totally pulled the look together. Um, okay, I think I'm gonna finish up with one of my favorite lip pencils. This is actually, if I just have to find it. Um, this is a shade that is part of the, it's another 1999 beauty product. Uh, it's called Neutra or Neutra. This is the um, 1999 Beauty pencil in Neutra, Neutra, I'm not sure how you say it. I think it's Neutra. But this is absolutely such a perfect everyday kind of creamy, slightly pinky, slightly browny nude color for someone of my skin tone. Um, I'm making sure that I say that because I think it's important that you know, this is what I would call an everyday nude for someone that looks like me. This is not what you would consider a nude for everybody. But I do think that this is actually an extremely flattering color on people of darker skin tones because it just looks like more of a statement color. On me, it looks a little bit more like a pull together everyday look. So I like to start, I have a little lip balm left over on my lips. Most of it's dried down by now. I like to start on the outer corners of my lips, on the bottom, and kind of work my way down. I'll probably fast forward you through this part. It is impossible to argue with that shade. It is so beautiful and so creamy. I love all of their pencils in all of their shades. I highly stand their products. So if you haven't tried 1999 Beauty, I really recommend that you do. Um, I could just leave it there if I wanted more of that matte lip look, but I think I'm gonna just add a touch of gloss. This is the Merit uh, Shade Slick in the shade Taupe. I love their shade slicks. They were on my top favorite products for the year. It's not that there's anything super magical about them. I just think they're a very nice curated set of lip oils. And I think that their shades are really pretty. And I found myself reaching for them a lot because they make me feel really good. So for me, that makes it like a total win of a product. Um, I also love the Merit Signature lipsticks. Those are great as well. And um, it was kind of a toss up for me between those two about like what was my favorite lip product of the year. But I think the shade slicks one out just because I, I reach for them probably the most of any lip product that I have right now. So anyway, this is the finished look. I don't know what we think. I like it. I definitely feel like this is a very me look. Um, probably because it has this shade on the inner corner, that greenish sparkle. Um, and I feel like it's giving me... <laughs> giving me back to work new year glam um, in a way that will make me feel more confident to take on the day. And um, it's using a lot of, whoops, Yikes. it's using a lot of fave products of mine. My vanity is a total mess right now and absolutely needs to be cleaned up, but that's, that's for another time. Um, I know this was a bit of a, like, I'm sure it was a little bit of a chaotic get ready with me. Um, you know, you'll have to be kind. This is my foray back into YouTube and I just thought I would do something really easy and simple to kind of get me back into the swing of things but I'm really looking forward to doing more. I will definitely be fixing up my background and trying to make it more aesthetically pleasing. I don't think that light being there is very helpful. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to do more, be back, give myself a lot of freedom to just be not a perfectionist and chat and get makeup out there for you guys, talk about things that I like and um, maybe even do some live streaming on Twitch. Hint, hint, that might be coming. We'll see, we'll see. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and uh, I hope to see you next time around.